Welcome back. In this video, I'll be covering memory access and stack operations in assembly. Technically, we've already seen one example of addressing memory, and that was in the Hello World program from the first video. So let's write a similar example so we can play with this memory access a bit more. We'll create a new file and add the start declaration, and then add a dot data section. You should be familiar with all this. Then we'll create a new label in this section named ADDR, and that's short for address. I'm naming it that uh, to highlight the fact that this label is really just a pointer to some memory address. Oh, and the memory it points to is just a string that contains the word yellow. Then switch back to a dot text section for our code and create the start label. Next, set EAX to 4 so we can do a system write call. And set EBX to 1 so we're writing to standard out. Set ECX to our address label because that's where the bytes we want to write are stored. Set EDX to 6 to specify how many bytes we want to write because yellow is 6 bytes long. And finally, make the system call by using an interrupt. Then we can exit the program with a status of zero, meaning that there was no error. And if we do all the usual assembling, linking, and executing stuff, we get the output yellow. Cool, but what if we want to alter the contents of the string at runtime? Well, that's actually pretty simple. Here, I'm using a move operation where the first operand is our address, surrounded by square brackets. This means that we're moving some data into that address. The second operand is byte h, meaning that the byte representation of the character h is what we're moving into the memory at our address. The byte keyword is important here because this move operation can also be used for larger integers than bytes. And the assembler needs to know how much data is being moved. Since ADDR points to the beginning of our string, that's where this H will be moved to. But we can also use an offset to access other parts of the data. Now we're moving an exclamation point into the memory at our address plus an offset of 5. So if our memory without an offset is where the Y was, then moving five bytes to the right puts us at the address where the W is. See where I'm going with this? If we assemble, link, and execute, uh, we'll be greeted by hello, followed by an exclamation point. And that's how you're able to write to specific locations in memory. So far, we've been working with contiguous bytes in the data section, but there are other data types. Here are some examples of common data types. We've been using this DB for storing byte strings like this, but you can also store byte literals. By the way, whenever a number begins with 0x like this, it means that it's a hex value. Fx, or FF in hexadecimal is 255. But you can also use decimal literals uh, if you don't start them with 0x. Sometimes you want to encode a larger integer. So this DW data type is 2 bytes long. In other words, 16 bits long. And this DD data type is 4 bytes long, or 32 bits. There are larger types, but since we've been focusing on 32-bit assembly, I'll stop here for now. Plus, now we're at the perfect point to focus on the stack. You might recall that this is the last in, first out, or LIFO data structure available to us, meaning that it behaves like a stack of books, where pushing is like putting a book on top of the stack, and popping is like taking a book off of the top of the stack. And you should also recall that beyond pushing and popping, the stack is just an array with a pointer to where the top is. 
And also remember that we do have random access to this memory, meaning that we can read and write from arbitrary locations within it. But even if you do remember all of that, it probably still helps to see a visual representation. So on the left, I'll be adding some assembly code, and on the right, we have a visual representation of the stack after that code has executed. ESP is our stack pointer. Uh, this is the actual register that holds the current location of the top of the stack. Below this is a visual representation of the stack. On the left side, we have the memory addresses, you might notice that these count by fours, and I'll explain that here shortly. And on the right, we'll have the value of each of these memory addresses, so the value stored at that address. You might be wondering why I'm starting with the stack pointer at the highest memory address, and that's because this is exactly how x86 machines work. The stack pointer starts at a higher address in memory and moves down with pushes and back up with pops. So what does it look like to push a value? Well, the push operation causes the stack pointer to decrease by 4, and then the value being pushed is written to that location in memory. Uh, this is why I've labeled the memory addresses counting by 4s, but why does the stack move by 4s in the first place? Well, because it's pushing 4 by integers. Remember, we're using 32-bit assembly, and each integer is 32 bits, or 4 bytes. So each number being stored is actually 4 bytes long. Now if we push another value, the same thing happens again. And again. And, well, you get the point. But instead of doing these as push operations, we could actually work with the ESP register directly. So that last push could be rewritten as subtract 4 from ESP and then move 357 into the location that ESP points to. The purpose of this D word keyword is to tell NASM that we're moving 4 bytes into this memory, this memory location. Remember that this move operation is exactly how we were able to turn the word yellow into hello by moving individual bytes at a time. But now we're moving four byte integers at a time, so we have to tell NASM um, you know, what size of data we want to move. And that's exactly what this D word keyword does. But let's change it back to the push version of that operation since it's easier to read, and then add this pop operation. So what did that just do? Well, it moved the value at ESP, the top of the stack, into the EAX register. In this example, that means EAX is now 357. And then it added 4 to ESP, removing 357 from the top of the stack. I mean, technically, the 357 value is still there in memory. It wasn't erased or anything. But if we do another push operation, it'll be written over. Of course, we could implement this pop operation using a move and an addition. It has the exact same effect, which is to move those four bytes stored at the location ESP points to, uh, which was 357, into the EAX register, and then add four to ESP, removing 357 from the top of the stack. Now, let's take everything that we've learned so far and write a program that allocates a string on the stack and then writes that to standard out. First, we start with the usual entry point stuff. Then, we create some space on the stack by subtracting 4 from it. Effectively, we've just allocated 4 bytes on the stack uh, that we can use however we want. Now, move the byte h into the first uh, the first byte allocated in this space. Move E into the next byte using the same offset that we used when we turned yellow into hello. Uh, then we move Y and an exclamation point. Then we can do the usual system write call. But this time we're setting ECX to be the address that ESP points to, the value of the ESP register. And we're setting EDX to 4 because that's how many bytes we want to write. 
Finally, we do a system exit call and end the program. And now if we assemble, link, and execute, it says, hey. Well, that's it for this video. In the next one, I'll show you how to combine the stack operations and the jump operations we've covered so far to create functions and function calls. Bye.